The focus of this training course so far has been related to estimating dam and levy performance. An important but often overlooked part of the risk assessment is the estimation of failure mode specific breach parameters used in the hydraulic breach modeling, which will inform the consequence evaluation. Estimating breach parameters should not be an afterthought, and it is not just the responsibility of the hydraulic engineer. This presentation will focus on the estimation of initial breach parameters for internal erosion failure modes. This presentation will provide an overview of embankment breach parameters and discuss various methods to obtain their initial estimates. While most of the focus in research and tools is on earth fill dams, there is considerably less information on breaching of rock fill dams. Some suggested approaches for estimating initial breach parameters for rock fill dams will be provided. Lastly, a brief overview of the RMC breach parameter suite will be provided. Overview. The estimation of a breach location, dimensions, and development time are critical aspects of a risk assessment. The breach parameters will directly affect the estimated peak flow, as well as any possible warning time available to locations downstream or in the levied area. Unfortunately, the breach location, size, and formation time are often the most uncertain pieces of information in a dam or levee breach analysis. Breach dimensions and development time must be estimated for every failure scenario that will be evaluated. This includes different failure modes as well as different hydrologic events. Breach parameters can impact peak outflow, flood depth, flood velocity, timing such as breach time, warning time, arrival time, etc., and ultimately consequences. It is important to consider a range of parameter estimates for the breach size and development time for each failure scenario or event, and then perform a sensitivity analysis of the breach parameters to identify their effect on the outflow hydrograph, downstream stages and flows, and warning time to any population at risk. A population at risk at the toe of the dam will likely not be sensitive to, to the breach parameters due to their close proximity and no warning time and greater flood depths and velocities. But population at risk further downstream may be very sensitive to the breach parameters. If the results of the risk assessment appear to be sensitive to breach parameters, multiple life loss estimates should be obtained to get a rough estimate of the uncertainty. When performing a dam or levee breach analysis, teams must first estimate the characteristics of the breach. Once the breaching characteristics are estimated, the Hydrologic Engineering Center's River Analysis System, or HEC RAS, can be used to compute the outflow hydrograph from the breach and perform the routing. The HEC RAS software requires the user to enter the following information to describe a breach. The user will identify a piping failure mode for internal erosion and specify a piping coefficient used to compute piping pressure flow. The user will also specify the breach dimensions, critical breach development time, and trigger elevation. During a piping breach, the movement of water through the dam is modeled as a pressurized orifice type of flow. The rate of water flowing through the dam is modeled with an orifice pressure flow equation, which requires a discharge coefficient, a measure of how efficiently the flow can get into the pipe orifice. Because a piping failure is not a hydraulically designed opening, it is assumed that the entrance is not very efficient. Recommended values for the piping pressure flow coefficients are in the range of 0.5 to 0.6. The physical description of the breach in HEC RAS consists of the height of the breach, breach width, and side slopes in horizontal to vertical. These values represent the maximum breach size and must be estimated outside of HEC RAS and entered into the program. Many regression equations discussed later use the average breach width, but HEC RAS requires the breach bottom width for input. 
HEC RAS requires the user to enter what is called the Critical Breach Development Time, or Breach Formation Time. The HEC RAS Breach Starting Time for a piping failure is considered to be when a significant amount of flow and material are coming out of the failure piping hole. The breach ending time is considered to be when the breach is for the most part fully formed. In other words, significant erosion has stopped, not the time until the reservoir pool is emptied. The breach formation time must be estimated outside of HEC RAS and entered into the program. The breach progression curve is used by HEC RAS during the breach formation time to adjust the growth rate of the breach. By default, the breach progression is assumed to be linear between the breach initiation and the full breach size or full formation time, but a sine wave or user-defined curve can also be selected. These default HEC RAS options typically only model the main part of the formation and widening phases, capturing the main surge of the breach formation and hydrograph, which typically lasts no more than several hours. The duration on either end of the main surge can be minutes to hours to days. The simplified physical breach method in HEC RAS can be used to define the entire breach process from start to finish. Downcutting and widening erosion rates as a function of velocity are user specified. This method is used for modeling levee breaches. This slide steps through a timeline for an internal erosion failure mode for a dam or levee that is watched. In other words, eyes on the dam or levee and a well-defined emergency action plan. The time periods requiring geotechnical input and discussion will be highlighted. Breach formation in HEC RAS begins at time zero. Beyond this time, the breach is virtually certain to form because intervention is unsuccessful and the failure mode has progressed enough that flows begin to increase rapidly due to gross enlargement of a pipe or loss of crest followed by collapse, downcutting, and widening. Hazard or breach occurrence in HEC life sim also begins at time zero. The likelihood of breach in the event tree corresponds to this time. The timeline begins with failure mode initiation. For example, amount of observed material movement suggests a pipe has initiated and is progressing towards the reservoir. This defines the beginning of the initiation phase of the breach process. For this example, it is shown occurring 36 to 12 hours before the breach starts to form and therefore negative values. Assuming adequate training and surveillance, the failure mode is likely to be detected shortly after it initiates if the seepage or le leakage exit is observable. The time period from, the from when the failure mode is detected up until recognition that breach is virtually certain to occur is the window of opportunity for intervention actions to arrest the failure mode development. The imminent hazard identification time is the time relative to breach formation at time zero when someone recognizes that the breach is going to occur or is occurring, determines that the population at risk needs to be evacuated, and initiates the warning and evacuation process. This time can happen before or after the hazard occurs. For internal erosion, this is usually associated with significant material movement being observed, unsuccessful intervention, and recognition that the breach is virtually certain to occur. Therefore, the imminent hazard identification likely occurs before the formation, before formation for dams or levees that are watched. The team will need to discuss whether there is ample warning, typically minus six to minus two hours, or minimal warning, typically minus two to zero hours, based on the failure mode and other site-specific factors. Since these times are relative to time zero, when the breach starts to form, they are also negative values. Here is the remainder of the warning and evacuation timeline in HEC Life Sim. The time periods can move relative to each other and are unique to each emergency management agency. Therefore, they are not shown here to a specific time. However, in a relative sense, an optimistic warning and evacuation scenario is shown, which begins prior to the start of breach formation. Whether or not a safe destination is reached by the mobilized 
PAR depends on the evacuation speed and flood wave arrival time. Around the time when the peak breach outflow occurs is the completion of the formation phase of the breach process. Breach formation time in HEC RAS was previously discussed in this presentation. The breach then widens due to erosion of the breach sidewalls. This slide illustrates the difference in the timeline for an internal erosion failure mode for a dam or levee that is not watched, in other words, no eyes on the dam or levee. This often occurs for dams that are not staffed and the public is not nearby to detect a developing failure mode or levees that are not being inspected or flood fought during an event. There is no intervention like the previous example. A key difference is that the imminent hazard identification likely occurs after the breach has formed and reports of flooding start to appear downstream of the dam or within the levied area. It typically occurs zero to plus two hours after the breach starts to form. And in this example, it is shown after the peak breach outflow has occurred. Here's the remainder of the warning and evacuation timeline in HEC LifeSim. As before, the time periods can move relative to each other and are unique to each emergency management agency. Therefore, they are not shown here to a specific time. However, in a relative sense, the time periods for the remainder of the warning and evacuation timeline occur after breach formation and peak breach outflow. The available time to reach a safe destination can be significantly reduced for this scenario, resulting in a greater likelihood of fatalities. Embankment dams. Potential breach characteristics can be estimated in several ways, including comparative analysis, 
which is comparing your dam or levee to historical failures of similar size, materials, and water volume. Regression equations, which are equations developed from historical failures to estimate peak outflow or breach size and development time. Utilization of velocity or shear stress versus erosion rates in physically based computer models or software that attempts to model the physical breaching process using sediment transport erosion equations, soil mechanics, and principles of hydraulics. All of these methods are viable techniques for estimating breach characteristics. However, each of these methods has strengths and weaknesses and should be considered as a way to est of estimating the parameters and not used as absolute values. If the dam under consideration is very similar in size and construction to one or more dams that have failed and the failures are well documented, appropriate breach parameters or peak outflows may be estimated by comparison. Comparative analysis is a simplified approach that entirely neglects the breaching process to use case study data similar to the dam under consideration to develop direct estimates of the dam's breach parameters. In general, the database of well-documented dam failure case studies is small and contains very few examples of very high dams or very large storage volumes. Reclamations DSO-98-004, wall 1998, is one of the most comprehensive databases. Froelich 2008 is another well-known database. Zhu and Zhang 2009 collected 182 failure cases, including some from China that were not previously available. Nearly one half are for high dams. Details of 75 failure cases had sufficient information for developing breach parameter models. This database is unique in that it attempts to characterize embankment erodibility. Ehas and Bowles 2014 made the following major modifications to the Zhuanjiang 2009 database and should be used instead. They changed breach development times to the commonly used definition, changed other breach parameters for consistency with Wall 1998 and Froelich 1995 and 2008, and changed some assigned erosion categories based on a review by Jean-Louis Briot. This slide presents an excerpt from Tony Wall's Dam Failure Database to provide a sense of the type of data cataloged, which includes embankment characteristics and dimensions, hydraulic characteristics, and breach characteristics, which include dimensions, outflow, and time parameters. Teton Dam is highlighted. Prediction equations are another simplified approach to estimate breach parameters as a function of dam height, reservoir storage, and embankment volume. They have the same limitations as comparative analysis because the regression equations are based on the same databases. Some of the more common regression equations are listed on this slide. Only Zhu and Zhang 2009 incorporate erodibility as a predictor variable. As previously mentioned, Ehas and Bowles 2014 made major modifications to the Zhu and Zhang 2009 database. For the regression analysis, Bowles et al. 2014 indicated they eliminated case histories for concrete face dams and embankment dams with core walls or cutoffs and omitted all Chinese dams to avoid potential criticism associated with the indirect access to the original reference. As a result, significantly fewer case histories, 27, were used to develop the revised Yuanjiang equations than were used for the original equations which included three low erosion category case histories, 11 medium erosion categories, and 13 high erosion categories, seven overtopping failures, and 20 internal erosion failures. It should be noted that there were several typographic and potentially logic errors in the published Bowles et al. 2014 regression equations. Physically based dam breach models are gaining more popularity in practice. These models use principles of hydraulics, sediment transport, and heading, head cutting to simulate the development of the breach. This approach is more difficult, but also offers the potential for more detailed results, such as predict, prediction of breach initiation time and prediction of intermediate breach dimensions, as well as ultimate breach parameters. 
the use of physically based erosion in dam breach modeling is justified or practical when breach parameters cannot be predicted using established regression equations, or it will help address the will it fail question. Several examples are listed here. Only WinDAM C and DL breach are free to download. Both can simulate breaches due to internal erosion or piping. This table from the best practices manuals compares the various physically based breach models. On the far right is NWS breach, which is a sediment transport model. It is free to download from rivermechanics.net. To the left of it is HR breach from HR Wallingford, which can evaluate piping and zoned embankments. Unfortunately, it is not free. As previously mentioned, WinDAM and DL breach can simulate breaches due to internal erosion or piping. Since both are free to download, they are highlighted in the first two columns with the differences between the two models appearing in a blue font. WinDAM B is from the NRCS and does not evaluate piping. It only assesses spillway and overtopping erosion. WinDAM C has the additional capability to evaluate piping in a homogeneous embankment. It uses the excess shear stress equation based on KD and tau critical that were previously discussed in this training course. The model will eventually be expanded to handle zoned embankments in the future. Where surface protection is present, WinDAM can assess its effectiveness and estimate the time for its removal. In other words, delay and overtopping erosion process. Dam and levee breach or DL breach from Clarkson University can evaluate piping in cohesive and cohesionless, homogeneous and zoned embankments. The model considers non-equilibrium sediment transport model and, and simulates cohesive embankment breach erosion process by head cut migration and breaching of composite embankment with clay core and cover. It can handle both one and two directional breaches for modeling of coastal and estu estuarine levee and barrier breaching. DL breach is being incorporated into AGC RAS. In addition to the initial breach parameters, teams must also estimate the velocity or range that the team thinks the embankment will continue to erode based on judgment considering the materials and flow conditions. The hydraulic modeler will use this information to review the HEC RAS model and adjust accordingly. Various methods are compiled in the RMC Critical Velocity Toolbox, which is part of the RMC Spillway Erosion Suite. A check for reasonableness should be performed by evaluating the breach flow and velocities through the breach during the breach formation process. This can be accomplished by reviewing the detailed output for the inline structure or dam and reviewing the flow rate and velocities going through the breach. This output is provided on the HEC RAS detailed output table for the inline structure. There are two things to check. First, if the HEC RAS model reaches the full breach development time and size, and there are still very high flow rates and velocities going through the breach, either the breach is too small or the breach development time is too short, unless there is some physical constraints limiting breach size. Adjust the breach size and development time to improve the estimates. Second, if the flow rate and velocities through the breach become very small, before the breach has reached its full size and development time. Either the breach size may be too large or the breach, may, breach time may be too long. Adjust the breach size and development time to improve the estimates. Levies.
There are no widely accepted empirical equations for levee breach dimensions, lateral erosion rates, or breach development time. Zamorati 2020 selected 55 datasets from international levee failures to derive empirical curves and equations for levee breach parameters as a function of levee height only. USACE does not utilize these equations, but the database plots of breach width, levee erosion rate, and breach development time as a function of levee height are shown on this slide. The legend in the blue box applies to all three figures. And the black data points are for piping or other factors. Using levee height is convenient, but probably too simplistic. A simplified physical breaching method is included in HEC RAS to calculate the development of levee breach geometry vertically and horizontally as a function of the velocity of the flow through the breach. The user selects breach widening and downcutting relationships, which are then used dynamically to estimate breach progression as a function of the actual velocity being computed through the breach on a time step by time step basis. The methodology for levee breach widening uses the excess shear stress equation discussed in the erodibility parameters presentation. Boundary shear stress at the toe of the breach sidewall, assuming a rectangular breach cross section, and Manning's equation. The figure on the right illustrates the relationships using the recommended erodibility coefficients for four erosion categories based on a review of the NCHRP database developed by Briod and others 2019 and assuming zero critical shear stress. The previous three relationships are shown as dashed lines. This serves as a starting point for inundation models. While this approach provides a much needed scientific basis for calculating levee widening rates, the results are very sensitive to the erodibility parameters and additional research is still needed. USACE has developed a breach data plotting tool to display breach data from HDF5 files in a graphical format. An example is shown on this slide, which shows headwater and tailwater, breach width, and velocity through the breach as a function of time. As previously mentioned, levy widening rates are very sensitive to the erodibility parameters, and geotechnical input and review are critical. Breaching of rock fill dams is different than earthen, earthen fill dams. This section will summarize the current understanding of the process and provide some suggested guidance and approaches for estimating breach parameters. There is a small number of case histories for large rock fill dams with low erodibility, and this is likely due to the intrinsic safety of this type of dam. No modern rock fill dam has failed from internal erosion in recent times. Modern zone central core rock fill dams are more erosion resistant than other low erodibility dams in the Zhuanjiang 2009 data set. The table at the top left summarizes historical accidents with the three largest reservoir volumes highlighted. The table at the bottom left summarizes historic failures and these are all due to overtopping. The two largest dams in the table, Oros and Helho, failed due to overtopping during construction. The table at the upper right summarizes large embankment dam failures in the past 50 years. The list includes Tomsok 
and Tokwe Mikosi rock-filled dams. However, Tomsok failed due to overtopping, and Tokwe Mikosi did not fail. The table at the bottom right is from Zhuanjiang 2009. Only three large, meaning height greater than 15 meters, embankment dams with lower rotability are in the database, and all three are outside the U.S. Dange and Gohao were two large rock-filled dam case histories from China. These plots of average breach width and breach formation time as a function of volume above the breach invert were generated from the DSO-98-004 database. The trend line is drawn through Hellhole, Oros, and Teton dams for reference. USACE estimated breach parameters for Mosul Dam and Iraq as part of a risk assessment. Mosul Dam is a very large rock fill dam and the range of parameter estimates are highlighted in yellow. These plots illustrate that large rock fill dams will be in the upper right corner of database of all dam failures, highlighting again the difficulty in using case studies and comparative analysis. Several laboratory tests were carried out at the Technical University of Lisbon in Portugal to better understand the breaching process and characterize the final breach configuration. The dam models were a half meter high with upstream and downstream slopes of one and a half horizontal to one vertical, 0.2 meters wide and two meter long crest, and had a dam volume of about 0.9 cubic meters and a reservoir capacity of about 2.7 cubic meters. The breach mechanism of rock fill dams, according to the tests, is different from what is usually described for failure of earthen fill dams. The deposition of eroded rock fill immediately downstream of the dam limits the rate of breach development and has a stabilizing effect. And the length of rock deposition downstream of the dam is about one and a half times the dam height. The average lateral erosion rate of the breach is about 80% of the average bottom erosion rate. Key observations of the breach final configuration are shown in the figure at the bottom right. Geometry that best fits the breach final configuration is parabolic. Final top width of the breach is approximately 2.25 times the dam height. Final average width of the breach is approximately 1.7 times the dam height. Final breach depth is approximately 0.8 times the breach height. Lateral slope of the breach banks is slightly smaller than the angle of repose. In some cases, the breach walls are nearly vertical due to coarser material. Profile along the breach axis presents at the upstream a negative concavity, which corresponds to the flow control section. Afterwards, a positive concavity. And finally, at the downstream, a negative concavity, which corresponds to rock deposition downstream of the dam resulting from its erosion. Erodibility is an important parameter. Briode's erosion categories bring erodibility down in complexity from erosion rate versus shear stress function to category number. This classification system can be presented in terms of velocity or shear stress. Categories are based on 15 years of erosion testing experience and rate of erosion of soil and rock materials by water flowing over horizontal surfaces as measured by the erosion function apparatus. Erosion rate scale ranges over several orders of magnitude. If the Teton dam failure took four hours for an erosion category of two and a half of medium to high erodibility, and considering that the erosion categories are on a log scale a rock fill dam failure, which may have an erosion category of four for lower erodibility, would take much longer. In summary, rock fill dams are not represented well in, in case history database, and hence standard regression equations. As previously mentioned, the deposition of eroded rock fill immediately downstream of the dam can have a stabilizing effect. Bowles and others in 2014 indicated that the rock fill material removed during the breaching process is deposited within a short distance downstream of the dam, causing a significant tailwater to develop that would reduce flow velocities through the breach, thus inhibiting both downward erosion and lateral development of the breach 
with the result that a narrower and shallower breach would be formed, taking a longer time to form and resulting in a lower peak breach flow rate. These envelopes of empirical data are shown on this slide. On the left, breach average width as a function of volume above the breach, considering Zhu and Zhang 2009 data set, is shown. And on the right, the breach formation time as a function of volume above the breach, considering the Zhu and Zhang 2009 data set, is shown. RMC toolboxes associated with breach parameters are part of the RMC breach parameter suite not the RMC Internal Erosion Suite. In the RMC Embankment Dam Failures Toolbox, there are separate worksheets for each of these case history databases. Filters are set up to sort by failure mode and embankment and hydraulic characteristics to find a similar dam to compare breach characteristics. Wall 1998 contains the most case histories at 108 and contains the most detailed information. It is recommended for usage. Froelich 2008 contains 74, McDonald and Longridge Monopolis 1984 contains 42, and Zhu and Zhang 2009, including the update performed by Ehas and Bowles in 2014, contains 75. References The following si slides contain primary references for more information on breach parameters. The following si slides contain primary references for more information on breach parameters. The following si slides contain primary references for more information on breach parameters. This concludes this presentation.